the Walther TPH. Let's check it out. The Walther TPH, it's the lesser known cousin of the Walther PPK, and yet it has a lot of the same quality, a lot of the same features, but it's down to 22 long rifle or 25 ACP. Uh, these were made in Germany, but also made by inner arms here in the United States. It's a very small, tiny little handgun, but it is a precision little piece. In fact, I call this the king of mouse guns because it's just beautiful and very reliable. The quality of Walther, same as their PPK, has made this a very collectible handgun since these are no longer produced. In fact, the magazine alone will cost you $150. But as far as a little pocket pistol, this is a great little gun. Now, I found this at a local gun show from one of my favorite dealers, and Norm really has a lot of cool firearms. And so when I saw the little TPH on the table, you know, I just needed it. And I was able to make this purchase because of Patreon, and we really appreciate their support. It allows us to bring some really cool, unusual guns to you guys. The Walther TPH, it means Taschen Pistol Hahn in German. In English, it's Pocket Pistol Hammer. Uh, these were designed in 1968. Uh, they were made in Germany. Uh, the big issue was that the 1968 Gun Control Act came and these were unable to be imported into the U.S. If you find a German model, they're worth a lot of money. And I think a lot of those were the blued models. Uh, they did make some blued models here in the U.S., but on very limited numbers. This is stainless steel, stainless steel frame. The quality on this handgun is exquisite. I mean, it's just beautiful machining. Uh, the engraving is crisp. It's just gorgeous. There's a price this brings that really makes this in the collector status. Uh, these were made in the U.S. in 1987 by Inner Arms up until 2000 uh, when they discontinued these. I mean, it's a six-shot 22 pistol, but they also made it in 25 ACP. Let's go ahead and drop our mag. We have a hill type mag release, which is a little different than the PPK. Six-round mag capacity. Uh, stainless steel mags, or nickel-plated mags actually, and then this small little base plate. Uh, one of the things about the base plate is that they'll start to crack a little bit. The good news is, is they make aftermarket aluminum base pads for these, and I have a couple ordered because I have another of these magazines and the, the base actually broke off while I was at the range. Let's check to make sure it's unloaded and the chamber's empty. Now this is a double single action handgun, and that means that the hammer is in the rear position uh, once you rack the slide. Uh, but if we bring our decocker down, it drops the hammer, and then you wanna bring it back up so that it's ready to fire. So that means that on that first shot, it's a long, heavy trigger pull. And so once we pull it, then the slide will be in the rear position, and it's a very soft, easy trigger pull. Now, I don't like to dry fire my 22 rim fires because it can damage the firing pin. Uh, and so we have some snap caps, and so we'll be using those for more tests because parts for these are probably not the easiest to come by, and if you find them, they're probably fairly expensive. Uh, we have black carbonate grips, very thin slide serrations, but really, this slide comes back so easy, you don't need them. I mean, they're so easy to bring back. And the safety or decocker actually aid with that, bringing it back. Smooth sides, uh, have more of a matte finish on the top. Beautiful texturing or engraving on the top strap, which is similar to your PPK. Uh, we have sights that actually are not bad for this size pistol. Uh, you have your orange outline at the back, which is just one line, and then we have a orange dot at the front. 
and I found these actually to be fairly accurate. Uh, this is a fixed barrel design, so the barrel's actually attached to the frame, and that really tends to lend to good accuracy. Uh, but also, it's a blowback, and which tends to give you a little more recoil, but with 22 long rifle, that's not a problem. Now with the hammer back, I can just decock it, and I can bring it back, and then we can just put it on fire. I love the machining on the front of this handgun, on the back. I mean, everything is so well done, very much like your Walther PPK. And speaking of which, the Walther PPK, I mean, this is an iconic pistol, of course, made really famous by James Bond movies. But it's in 380 ACP, it's double single action, just like the TPH, and the TPH was designed later. Uh, after the PPK. This was really more for just a small little pistol that you carry in your pocket for deep cover, deep concealment. Uh, there are rumors that the CIA actually has carried these and other federal agencies because they're just really high quality. They're very reliable as far as what I've done, but I have seen reports that these can be finicky. Uh, for us, we were shooting standard velocity, Fiocchi ammunition, high velocity. We were shooting CCI mini mags and it was flawless, uh, except for one issue, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this gun just ran like a top. But obviously, I mean, you can see the cues from the PPK, it's just a heck of a lot smaller. Now with the grip, uh, there's not a lot. I mean, I have medium-sized hands, and I'm only getting two fingers to, on the grip, but again, it, the recoil is so mild that you really don't notice it. Uh, the back strap is smooth, the front strap is smooth. With this little finger on the base pad, uh, you know, it really doesn't even change the fact that you still only get two fingers, but it does rest that second finger against it. And so, honestly, very easy to shoot. Now, one issue that a lot of people have, especially with big hands or meaty hands, is that you get the Walther bite. And so, as you see it coming back, it just barely clears my hand, and I have medium-sized hands. I didn't have any issues whatsoever, uh, but there have been a lot of reports where you can. Now, if we engage the safety decocker, you'll notice that there is a transfer bar that blocks the firing pin. And so that's gonna keep this from firing. And so as we bring it on down, again, it just drops that hammer. Now the hammer's pretty recessed, and that just makes it more snag-free. A lot of people will try to grab it from the top. The best thing to do is to grab it from more of the top right and then pull down. It just makes it easier. Now with it on decock, it's gonna make it <laughs> pop back down. But here, it makes it easy to be able to, you know, pull that hammer back if you have it in double action and you wanna shoot it in single action. The grips are just a black carbonate type plastic uh, and they have the checkering here on the sides and then just a polished black that kind of surrounds that, just makes it look nice. I've seen some with wood grips as well, which makes it look really classy. The barrel is 2.8 inches in length, and again, this is a blowback design, so the barrel is actually uh, attached to the receiver. And guys, it really does have a little bit of heft. Being all stainless steel, I mean, it's not a really light handgun, but yet, because it's so small, it's not all that heavy as well. But for its size, I mean, it definitely has some heft to it. One thing, too, is it does not have the last round hold open. So when you fire that last round, it's just gonna close and you're gonna just get a click. Now, one of the issues that we had with this handgun at the range, and this has been reported pretty widely, is that when it is in double action, uh, you can have some misfires. Doesn't quite have the strength that it does when it's pulled all the way back in single action. And we experienced that as well. One of the things that I love about double single action is that if I pull the trigger and I hit a dead round, I can pull the trigger again, which we did, and it'll fire the round. So it's one thing to take note of as far as a pocket pistol is you may have to pull that trigger twice on the first round. Now, while Walther doesn't make the TPH any longer, it does make the PPKS in 22 rimfire. So this is an option. It's a 10 plus one magazine capacity compared to the six plus one of the TPH. And honestly, even though it's aluminum alloy frame and slide, it weighs the same as my PPKS. And so it gives you that exact mimicking of the handgun weight. Recoil is a heck of a lot less. These are great little guns. Uh, they do come in a nickel finish as well, which this has kind of a matte finish to it. And to be honest with you, if I'd had my druthers, I would have picked out the nickel plated, but they just happened to have this one in stock uh, when I bought this a few years ago. But you can see the difference, I mean, it's considerable. But to be honest, this has so little recoil, the size doesn't matter. But Walther also offers their P22, and this is a 10-round polymer frame, 22 pistol. 
Uh, these are great. They've been around for a number of years. The original design was very similar to the P99, a full-size handgun, and this is more like the PPQ as far as the design features. With the new PDP design, though, I'm thinking that they may change this to that PDP design, which typically Walther does. But they do still offer both of these handguns currently. And we're going to pop in a couple of snap caps, uh, again, to preserve your firing pin with 22 rimfire. Uh, some modern pistols are fine with it, but it's best to use snap caps. So we're going to go ahead and decock the pistol, bring up our safety, and let's check the trigger pull action. Now, on double action, and that is with the hammer in the down position, is we bring it back smooth but heavy, very heavy. Gets to a certain point and it stops, and then it's not a bad break. It's not something to write home about, but it's not bad. Then when we go to single action, we have some free play right here. It hits a wall and actually a better break. Reset, right about there. Okay, checking the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge, and we have it in double action with the hammer down. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. Eight pounds, 9.2 ounces. We did this a few times before, and we were getting, honestly, around the eight and a half pound range. And guys, that is part of your safety is that double action trigger pull because you have to mean to pull it. With single action, that's with the hammer in the rear position, 2.2 pounds. One pound, 15 ounces. I mean, it is fairly light on single action. Weight on the TPH, 14 ounces. Weight on the PPKS, 23.1 ounce. This is almost 10 ounce difference. Now the predecessor to the TPH was the TP. It was made in 1961 to 1967. It had an open slide design, but again, that was discontinued in 1971, which overlapped the TPH production. This started again in 1968. Guys, as far as the self-defense option, you've got six rounds of 22 long rifle, uh, and that is honestly inadequate. Uh, I do know a lot of people, especially a lot of friends of mine whose wives will not carry anything over a 22. They're just that recoil sensitive. And I would recommend at least carrying a 22, but work up to something that has a little more power to it. We want to give a big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo, all made in the USA some of the best quality ammunition on the market. And I'll tell you guys, this little 22, especially this high velocity stuff, and we have it in the uh, white box, it is very similar, if not identical, to CCI Mini Mags. We're gonna check out some of the standard velocity, just see how it works. We're, we've got some 22 CCI Mini Mags, and then we're gonna be using the Fiocchi. the wall they're TPH this is just one of those small little very collectible fun mouse guns and this is kind of the king of the hill in a lot of ways it does shoot 22 long rifle of course and you know the 25 ACP I'd much rather have the 22 six rounds it's small but yet with the stainless steel frame you know it's a little hefty but great shooting little gun we've been out here for a good while shooting regular high velocity ammunition from Fiocchi. We've been shooting standard ammunition and it just runs. And so it, that's good to know, especially with some of these small pistols, they can have some issues. But very light recoil, a lot of fun, very pointable, has that PPK feel to it. Uh, you know, it's just one of those little guns that I've wanted for a long time. They're pretty expensive. And we're gonna be shooting some standard velocity. just <laughs> light recoil, very mild. I mean, it's just fun to get out to the range. The sights actually for a small pistol like this, you can see them. And uh, trigger pull, that first round is pretty heavy if you're going from double action. So we're gonna shoot from double action first. And I'm gonna decock it, bring it back up. Make sure that you bring it up because you'll have that safety engaged. That first trigger pull. Then the next trigger pull is very light. Then 
The only thing about this handgun is that it doesn't hold open on the last round. That's the only thing I can think of that, you know, I'd like to see. But otherwise, this is a gem, and I can understand why the price is where they are. I mean, this is really when there was a lot of quality put into these beautiful handguns. If you have this slipped in your pocket, you're going to use it for self-defense. Chances are it's going to be a one-handed deal. And it'll do it. Now for disassembly, we're going to drop our magazine and we're going to go ahead and check the chamber to make sure the gun's empty. Now, one of the things about this handgun, you cannot disassemble this firearm with the magazine inserted. Uh, what you do is go ahead and bring down your trigger guard. And so what we're going to do is bring down our trigger guard, and you need three hands for this, but it's not too bad. Bring your slide all the way back and lift up, and then it'll just come right off. Uh, and here you can see the fixed barrel. Again, this is going to lend to really good accuracy. And the recoil spring is over your barrel. I mean, it's very simple. Very simple. And, you know, sometimes simplicity is genius. And this is what this is. You can see that some of the levers come down into and under the grip, which is with a lot of Walther and Beretta handguns, especially their pocket guns. Here's the slide. The finish is exceptional inside. I'm, guys, this gun is absolutely beautiful. Now, I did hear reports that some of the U.S. made handguns uh, were roughly finished. They weren't finished that well and that they became more and more finely finished as time went on. But this particular specimen is absolutely beautiful. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip. Now for reassembly, I'm going to put our spring back over our barrel, make sure it's in place. Take your slide, start out from the back, and hold down on your trigger guard and then lay it in the slide rails and then it comes back and now you're in business. And we'll empty our magazine and we'll test for function. And we're good to go. And one additional factor with the value of handguns is the box. Uh, this one came with a box, it came with the extra magazine. Again, those magazines can run $150, so I was glad to have it. Uh, and this one also has the owner's manual. So, you know, there's sometimes that that does affect the value of the handgun. And so it's just one of those things that if you're just out for the gun or you want to collect it and have all the accoutrements. Now, the going price for the TPH is according to where you find it. But I was seeing it anywhere from $1,100 to $12 and up. Uh, these are not cheap. Uh, in fact, I saw a couple of more rarer models that were going for $2,500, including the blue model, because that is one that was made in Germany. Uh, and these did, again, come in 25 ACP, which really fetch even a higher price. Your magazines are typically about $150 a piece. I mean, they're not cheap. I think Triple K may have made some for this as well, and you might be able to find some of those cheaper. It's funny, the 25 ACP magazines are typically cheaper and more available. But what are some pros and cons? Well, obviously the price. That's a big con, uh, but you know, you're getting what you're paying for. And if the market is that, then when you buy this, typically the market only goes up on collectible firearms. I would not recommend doing any kind of modification to this handgun because it's just a collectible piece. And it's a lot of fun to take to the range just as it is. Caliber 22 long rifle, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, you can plink. It's, this gun's really accurate. It's very small for your pocket. If that's what you want to do is carry a small pocket pistol. Uh, for me, the reliability was stellar, except for a couple of times where the double action trigger pull just didn't set off the round. But then second strike capability took care of it. The fit and finish, absolutely beautiful. And it's based on the PPK design, which is proven and well known. A couple of more cons would be, you know, the grips could crack. I think you can probably get grips, not with too much difficulty. Uh, and the base pads do tend to crack as well. And again, replace those with aluminum pads, which would fix that. Double action trigger pull is heavy. Uh, the single action trigger pull is super light. So take that as you will. Sights, really nice. I like the sights. Uh, it, they do show up well for these really small pocket pistols. Sometimes they just have gutter sights. So this just gives you an advantage. So overall, just the quality and the finish of this handgun, it's just excellent. Uh, the price is definitely prohibitive for most people. 
But you might be like me and you stop by somewhere and you get a good deal on this handgun. So the Walther TPH, it's just a baby PPK, but man, it is so much fun to take to the range. In 22 long rifle, there's no recoil or 25 ACP. Uh, definitely more toward the collector side and really for mouse guns, it's the king of the hill. Excellent pocket gun, very high quality made and slips in your pocket really nice. And again, we really appreciate our Patreon members for making purchases like this possible. And a big thanks to Norm as well. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. obscure in a sense, but the, okay, were they, were they that obscure? Now for disassembly, we're gonna, okay. Why is that like, okay. Check again to make sure the gun, well, there you go, you got your snap cap. Both here in Germany, here in Germany, we're not in Germany.